Impact Hustlers, the podcast on entrepreneurs and changemakers that are creating solutions to the world's biggest problems. Impact Hustlers is brought to you by Waira UK, part of Telefonica Open Future. Visit waira.co.uk to learn how our acceleration programs can help your startup grow. And this is your host, Michael Shafrat. In today's episode, I'm talking to Rockwell Shah, the CEO of Pesis, a mobile app that literally makes you fall asleep. And Pesis is now used by more than a million users worldwide to treat insomnia and have a more peaceful sleep. Welcome, Rocky. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Very much appreciate it. Thanks very much for joining us. Uh, how did you end up uh, professionally making people fall asleep? Uh, how did you get into this and how does Pesis actually work? So... Pizzizz provides sleep at the push of a button. And most people don't realize, but poor sleep is a public health epidemic, right? So something around 70 million people in the US, 31% of Europe, globally 2 billion people suffer from insomnia. And the vast majority of these cases of insomnia are caused by the same simple disease. It's just too much thinking, right? And people lay in bed unable to shut off their brains. So, the real key is if you can quiet someone's mind, you can get them to fall asleep. And that's what Pizzizz does. So, we have this patented system that plays you a sleep-optimized mix of music, voiceover, and sound effects that changes each night that will quickly just quiet your mind, put you to sleep, keep you asleep, and then wake you up feeling refreshed. And that's what we do at our core. Um, how we got here is a, is a really interesting story. So... About 20 years ago, in 1999, um, Pizzizz started development on hardware devices. And the very first Pizzizz device was a little black looking MP3 player that um, would play you a different session each time. And you could set it from between, you know, 15 minutes and 60 minutes. And it was geared directly for power napping. Um, and it was, it was way, way, way ahead of its time. Um, but it was also a very expensive device. So it wasn't very accessible to most people. It was kind of popular in the CEO or sports player, you know, group. You know, There's a couple of celebrities that used it that made it kind of popular, but it would never reach global scale as a $400 hardware device. Eventually, over time, um, Pizzizz moved into desktop software and then first generation mobile apps, second generation mobile apps. And, you know, by the time it got to the second generation mobile apps, there were a lot of people that were raving fans of Pizzizz, but the company had never really hit global scale and reach. And uh, that's where I came along and really reimagined the product to help get it to where it is today. Very interesting story because um, um, basically it used to be a device quite pricey, quite restricted to a very specific audience. I think there were uh, quite some prominent people using it. Um, I, th uh, I think, was it was it Steve Jobs, Tony Robbins? Something yeah, like that? yeah, Tony Robbins, Steve Jobs, a lot of these guys were big fans of business. Yeah. So, so that's great, right? Uh, at the time, the company helped, um, and you weren't involved at that time, but at the time, company, the, the company helped people like them, uh, fall asleep. But, um, can you talk us a bit through how you went when you came in, uh, into the company and how you really went from having a technology that's really proven to make people fall asleep and really help them with insomnia and, uh, have a positive impact? Take that technology, refine it, put it into a mobile app and really grow it. How, how do you think about your global impact and really um, maximizing that to the scale that you're at right now with your uh, 1 million users? I think it largely comes down to listening to customers. And I don't mean just listening to what, what they say, but also listening to their behavior. And that was one of the critical components missing out of previous versions of Pizzizz that we really brought to the table. Um, you know, there was, there was so much in terms of how, how people would interact with the product and what they wished and dreamed and hoped that the product would do that it didn't. And, you know, the core functionality was there and it showed a lot of promise, but it was really inundated with a kind of a bad user experience. And to find out what's bad about the user experience, you really have to listen to the users. Um, not just what they say, but, but what they do. 
And that's what we did in a variety of forms. So we obviously did the normal kind of customer interviews and the surveys and the mobile analytics. But we also thought deeply about the the problem of sleep itself and you know what kind of issues people might be uh, people might be having um, with with the core product and starting to dream up experiments and starting to dream up um, different scenarios to test and see you know how people would react and and one of the core things that we did in revamping the product was um, we we created all new sets of what we call dreamscapes and. The, the dreamscapes are the pieces of music that people listen to while they fall asleep. And we design all of them in house. And the creation of a dreamscape is really a combination of, um, academic psychoacoustics. So psychoacoustics is the branch of psychology that deals with sound perception and its physiological effects. It's a combination of what we understand from clinical sleep interventions. So, when we look at the literature on progressive muscle relaxation, hypnosis, autogenic training, you know, breathing exercises, meditation, there's a lot of, of sleep interventions that um, have been shown in the lab to work really well, but have never been um, commercialized and consumerized. And, and combining all of that with personalization and learning algorithms so that the system can get smarter the more that you use it, the more that you interact with it. When you combine all these things together and put the feedback loop of actually testing with real people so that you can understand how the sounds and the music affect somebody's physiology, it can get very powerful. And, you know, in prior versions of Paziz, they never did that. In prior versions of Paziz, it was more, it was more just art that a group of, of talented people would get together and they would create these sounds and this music and this, these scripts, but they would, they would not be in a cycle of iteration. And I think that is one of the most powerful things is you're probably not going to get it right the first try. You're probably going to need to iterate quite a bit. And that I think is one of the big keys is that iteration cycle. Talk us through some of these stories that you encountered when you met your customers, when you developed your um, technology and when you developed uh, your, your soundscapes. Um, what were the problems that these people were facing and uh, how weren't they solved at the moment? And then more importantly, what, what was the kind of impact that you saw that Persis was able to achieve uh, for them? You know, one of the things that is amazing about listening to your users or asking them questions is... Oftentimes their answers will surprise you. One of my, uh, one of my favorite examples of this is we asked users why they came to Paziz or what may, what was going on in their life that made them search for a solution like Paziz. And, you know, you can think of the normal answers, right? You know, oh, I'm, I'm thinking too much. Like I have a lot going on. I might have financial problems, relationship stress, but there was an answer that totally caught us off guard and it was, that somebody in their life recently had died and they were having trouble sleeping at night. Whether that, you know, was a husband or a wife or a brother or sister or family member, somebody, somebody important to that, that person had recently died. It was one of the top five answers and it completely took us off guard. We didn't even think of the use case and it, it very much influenced the way that we thought about the product and what we what content we created for the platform. So, you know, listening, asking questions and listening can be so powerful. You know, it's, it's funny. I spent 10 years in medical software before doing Paziz and doctors would never email me saying thank you. You know, doctors would never say, oh, thank you so much for, you know, generating us a, a bunch of business or really helping our practice. Never got a thank you email. Um, with Paziz, I get one every day, at least, you know, emails, Facebook messages, tweets, um, Instagram posts of people just being incredibly grateful. And it's for all sorts of reasons. You know, I think one of the, one of the most impactful pieces of feedback I got was from a, a woman named Julie who posted on our Facebook and she said, you know, I truly believe Paziz has saved my life. Thank you. I was suicidal because of my um my insomnia that was caused by my ptsd and you guys saved me and when you get messages like that 
not even just once, but on a routine basis. It's so, it fuels you and drives you so much to keep wanting to make a bigger impact and push the envelope to help more people. And, you know, we're seeing this help with chronic pain management, with anxiety, you know, with stress, with all sorts of things. Because when you think about it fundamentally, sleep is one of the three pillars to, you know, well-being. You know, there's there's sleep, there's nutrition, and then there's exercise. So, if you really and truly help somebody in any one of these three pillars, you're going to fundamentally shift a bunch of areas of their lives. And oh, I often, um, you know, we have some some pretty famous athletes and celebrities that still use Pizzizz. And uh, there's there's one in particular that I think of in the in the last Olympics, who uh, she was the captain of the women's gymnastics team um, for the Americans. And she uses Pizzizz as, uh, as a tool, as a mechanism in between her training sessions during the day. So, she uses the napping module to take 90-minute naps in between her training sessions. And I often wonder, you know, did she Pizzizz right before she, she went and did you know, her gold medal run, you know, uh, I even think about the same thing with, with JK Rowling. So JK Rowling is a, another uh, pizzizzer. And I think, you know, oh, did she, did she come wake up from a pizzizz and write another chapter or a screenplay or something? You know, it's really, it's, it's fun all ways around. You know, you have the people that have really hardcore problems that you make fundamental shifts in their lives. And it's incredibly meaningful to them. And you have other groups of people where, you know, you're helping them push the envelope in their particular profession or industry. And it's fun to sit back and think how you might be affecting the people and the world. That's the, I think, the really impressive thing about uh, what you do. And I think one question that um, struck me is a bit, um, do you think that the way healthcare works right now is broken and needs much more solutions like Pizzis or digital solutions that actually help patients rather than maybe just prescribing some drugs, you know, like, um, obviously, these people that have sleep problems, there is solutions out there right now uh, in the healthcare system, there's sleeping pills, there is um, seeming solutions that serve as a temporary cure. Do you think like technology needs to play a bigger role in actually stepping in and providing even better solutions than just merely taking a drug? Healthcare is broken, not just in the US, but around the world in most places. Um, you know, it's broken for a number of reasons. I, I wouldn't say that the technology is going to be the saving grace for healthcare. You know, so, for instance, in US healthcare, there's about four or five really big problems. Um, you have a problem where in the last six months of somebody's life, they spend 20 to 30 percent of all of the costs that they will ever incur in healthcare on the system in the last six months of their life which is an enormous strain on the system. Um, you have issues where, because it's fee for service in many specialties in the United States, you're seeing you know, doctors ordering all sorts, of, um, all sorts of ancillary things when you go in for a visit that they really shouldn't order, but they're trying to maximize revenue. You're seeing issues with prescription drug medications where doctors are prescribing drugs based on effectiveness instead of based on op optimization for effectiveness and price. So, if there's a drug that's 95% effective, but it costs $100 a pill, and there's a drug that is, you know, 88% effective, but it costs a dollar a pill, most doctors will prescribe the 95 at $100 a pill drug before the other one. And that's not an optimal solution. Um, to the problem in most cases. And you're seeing a huge problem with diabetes in the US where um, because the, the population is so unhealthy in their eating habits, it's you know, spilling over into the healthcare system and causing massive strain in, in healthcare. And you know, these are fundamental problems that some of them can be addressed by technology, but some of them can't. The, the healthcare cost being so high in the last six months of somebody's life Maybe there's some ways that technology can address that, but that's really more of a human issue. You know, that's more of a coming to terms and understanding, um, are we okay as a society that this is true? Or do we want to make some fundamental shifts? And there's no necessarily right answer. It's a very sensitive topic. And, you know, different countries handle it in different ways. But, you know, certainly, yeah, I mean, there's ways that 
um, technology can can help the problem, but I'm not really one the one that is going to stand up and say technology is a cure all. All right. Do, do, do you see in, in your vision and uh, when you move forward, do you see other areas that you really think this is something that we could help solve? Yeah. I mean, for us specifically, we're defining a new genre of music called functional music. It's music with a purpose beyond entertainment where, you know, if you want to increase your productivity or you want to help your sleep or you want to reduce your stress or anxiety, we can design pieces of music that will really help you get there. And of course, there's, there's a limit to the power of music, right? You know, music can't cure every single ailment that you have, but it can um, really impact and help in many places. And we've really only begun to scratch the surface of how sound can truly affect the human body. So, you know, for our part in Paziz, we are certainly going to be expanding past sleep. You know, we just launched our focus module recently. So it's music for work, music for productivity, music to help you get more stuff done. So you just listen to it and you'll pretty much instantly get in the zone. It's, it's wild. I mean, if you haven't tried it yet, you totally have to try it. And that's the beginning for us of expanding out into more functional music genres. What do you, what do you advise founders that at the moment might be looking at innovative solutions, have some kind of IP and some kind of technology that they see can really change the lives of individuals, but are really looking for the best way to bring this to global scale? How, how, what, what do you advise your, yourself back when you started out um, in terms of how to think about taking that technology and really scaling it up? I think the, the most important thing you have to figure out is how you're going to reach people. And I, I think that's usually the last thing an entrepreneur thinks about. They go build the product and they may even listen to customers, but they don't understand how they're actually going to get the customer or how they're going to reach the patient, you know, if it's not a direct to consumer model. And I think you have to start there. You have to start in the channel. Well, let me preface this. You don't have to do anything. There are many ways to do many things. Um, if you want to maximize your chance of success, I think the best way to do it is to start with the acquisition channel. You know, whether it's going to be a more medical model uh, and patient based or more consumer model or business model, you know, B2B, you, you got to figure out how you're actually going to, to reach those people. For us, you know, we knew that there are great mechanisms through the app store, um, through, you know, Facebook, through social media. Um, through even email marketing. I mean, there's a lot of ways to reach the consumer for us, but we are more of a direct to consumer model. If you're going after something that's you know, very, very hardcore medical, figure out how you're going to get that technology in the hands of patients before building that technology. Because oftentimes, whatever that acquisition channel is, is going to change what you build and how you build it. How far do you think are you in your journey? Do you, are you? thinking, okay, we're already at a really massive scale. Uh, this is really already generating a great impact. Or what's your mission with Pizzes? I mean, at its core, we're here to deliver great sleep to the world. And as long as insomnia rates are increasing, you know, as long as you know, poor sleep is a public health epidemic, our job isn't done. Um, when those things are no longer true, then we can sit back and think, well, maybe we had a, maybe we had a, Uh, a good run and we caused a, a dent in the problem when we helped we helped solve it that sounds very good there's still much work to do for you um but it sounds very impressive how you've already uh, achieved quite a global impact with with Pizzas. and uh thank you very much for your time today and uh, all the best for the future and for for Pizzas. thanks for having me on take care this was impact hustlers impact hustlers is brought to you by Wyra uk part of telefonica open future Learn more about Wyra on www.wyra.co.uk.